Hello, I'm Chris Sanford and this is my bullet fly. I did an article in Fly Fishing and Fly Tying magazine about well, quite a few years ago now uh, and since then we've done lots of different versions. Uh, earlier this year um, when the season started uh, we did a mayfly emerger version and I got a very nice letter from a guy who said I tied a few up, it's a fantastic fly, I caught loads of fish but I had to take it off. I had to take it off because I caught too many fish and my fishing partner got cross. <laughs> I love it. Thank you very much for your letter, mate. Really good. Um, it also features on my DVD. Mayflies and more. No expense spared on this edition, by the way. Lighting, music, sound effects. Thank you, Ian. You're welcome. <laughs> Where am I? Ah, oh, yes, good. Yes, we've done another version. We've done another version and it's called the rubber bullet. Now, why is it called the rubber bullet? Because, ta-da, it has got rubber legs. There it is, the rubber-legged bullet. Oh, um, we put this together uh, about eight weeks ago now. I've been fishing it almost every time I go out and it's great. You can fish it static on still waters or just move it a little bit on the rivers and it really does the business. Um, I've started the fly off because this is the boring bit um, and any intermediate tie will know how to tie deer hair on top of a hook. Uh, the deer hair you need is some nice straight bleached deer hair like that. Tie it on uh, with a few tight wraps. It'll flare up at the front of course, just give it a nice little touch like that and it will sort itself out and it'll be standing up at the back. So take your scissors and cut diagonally down there and so you start a nice tapered body. Then bind that deer hair down and the body ends up like that. Okay? Um, the thread I'm using is Vivus 100D. I like this thread very much. A lot of people say they find it a bit slippy. Well, if you find it slippy, put some wax on it. Uh, we'll just reattach it and come down to the bottom of the fly. And we make the body out of CDC. A nice CDC feather here like that, okay? A nice long one with short fibres is the way I like to do it. And you tie it at the back by just putting a couple of loose wraps over the stalk and then pulling it through, pulling it through, pulling it through right to the last moment, you trap it and wind it down. You stop the thread just about where the thorax is going to finish. Take your hackle pliers now, the secret of wrapping this feather to make the body is two or three flat wraps to begin. One, two, there we go, and a three. And then turn the feather on its side so all the little fibres are sticking out and do a few more turns so you get lots and lots of fibres sticking out like that. Oh, we love it, we love it, we love it. There we go. And finish just where your thorax is going to finish. And when you tie it down, make sure you really tie it down tightly. Because if you don't, it is likely to spring back and you look a right pillock. All right, technical term there. Cut it off. Okay. If you're nervous, like I am, always give it a few more turns. There we are. And park your thread behind the wing. Don't worry if there's a few fibres hanging about, it all part of the mix. Now then, usually for the thorax I use a sparkly material because I think it attracts the attention, but more recently I've been trying different furs because I found these, this box of natural furs. They're distributed by the Vineyard Company and so your local Vineyard dealer should have it in stock or can order them for you. They're really, really good. You get a dozen in the box, uh, the first from all around the world, coyote mask, camel, Australian opossum, light hairs mask, muskrat, and of course my favourite, which is beaver. I do love a bit of beaver, I really do. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to use a nice bit of beaver for this. Um, but what we do first of all, let's open it so I can get hold of it. There we are. What we're going to do first of all is we're going to split the thread. So I want to show you this dubbing technique that I saw at a, at a fair the other day. I'd heard about it but I'd never seen it practiced and uh, it's called touch dubbing. You can do it on a single thread or you can do it on a split thread like this. Okay, And what you need is some tacky wax, that's this stuff. Um, and you take the tacky wax and you merely 
touch it on the thread. Just touch it. Don't need a lot of it, just so it's a little bit tacky. Okay. Then you take your beaver, take a handful of beaver like this, and you simply touch the thread. Very lightly. Like that. You only need about that much. A little bit more there. That's it. Okay, and then you close the loop and spin the thread. And with a bit of luck, folks, you've got a little fur rope, a little beaver rope. How much do we love that? Well, we love it a lot. There it is. See? Lovely. And we just wind it on and wind it back towards the body like that. There you go. Then it's time to put on the rubber legs. Um, the rubber legs come in a um, in a sort of lump like that, in a great, great piece like that. And you take off what you need, which are two little pieces like that, two little bits like that for the legs. OK, now tie them in carefully, one each side. Take your time with this. Do one careful wrap to position the leg. Make sure it's exactly where you want it. Don't rush. There we are. And don't worry if they're a little bit too long because you can always cut them down, but you can't add it on. All right. So put another turn over there to make sure it's not going anywhere. Lovely. Then you take your other rubber leg and you put it on the other side. Like this. Is it where you want it? Yes, it is. And you put another turn over to secure it. Now, it's not terribly equal with the other one, so we'll pull the other one up a bit. Pull that one back a bit. <laughs> and now for the exciting bit. You take the wing and you pull the wing back like that. Make sure your rubber legs aren't trapped. You take your thread over like that and make the head of the fly. All right. Once you've got it in position like that and it's holding it gently, go in front of that wrap and do it a tighter one and then a tighter one still. Lovely. Now, as I say, you can always cut a little bit off, which we will do now. We'll just trim these legs a little bit like that. Perfect. And we'll trim the front legs as well a little bit like that. A little bit. That's about right. Yeah. Take the jolly old whip finish tool and do two quick whip finishes. One, two, Tighten up. Lovely. Now, when you've nibbed off the thread, another tip is to take your needle and pick out your beaver. Pick your beaver out, all right? Then you've got lots of little leggy bits and you know how much they like it. There's a rogue one that's got much too long. All right. And it really pays not to put too much tacky wax on the thread. Otherwise you get a tacky beaver and there's absolutely nothing worse. There really isn't. All right, there we go. Good. The rubber bullet. <laughs> One thing left to do, and that is strengthen the head. We strengthen the head with Bug Bond Light. All righty. Once again, take your time with this. A little bit over the wraps and a little bit over the head of the fly because this will protect it from those little teeth that do so much damage. All right. You have to cure it, of course, and you do that with your bug bond torch. This is one of those that connects to the mains, and all you have to do is step on the little pedal, hold it over the head of the fly, and in no time at all it is cured to a nicety. And the great thing about this torch is it saves you a fortune in batteries. <laughs> Yep, there we go. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the rubber bullet. Tie it, try it, and catch a big one. I'll see you next time. Now, if you'd like to see a lot more flies, a lot more fun, and a lot more of my stuff, go to my website. It's at www.chrissanford.com.